Is time for learning just a bunch of cartoons? Is power homeschool old-fashioned and boring? Which one should you choose? Let's compare the two so you can decide exactly which program is the better choice for your family. Let's start with the basics. Both Time for Learning and Power Homeschool can be used to homeschool kids from pre-K through 12th grade. Neither program offers a free trial, which is a bummer, but the pricing is very similar. Time for Learning offers a 14-day money-back guarantee, so if you cancel within that first 14 days, you can get a full refund. Power Homeschool does not appear to offer any guarantees. The cost of Time for Learning is $29.95 a month for pre-K through 8th grade and $39.95 a month for high school. They do offer a discount of 30% off for each additional student and a 10% discount if you purchase an annual subscription. Power Homeschool, on the other hand, is a flat rate of $25 a month per student, no matter how many students you have enrolled. They also do not offer an annual subscription option. Both Time for Learning and Power Homeschool are not schools. They are online homeschooling programs which basically means they are curriculums that just happen to be done online. Since they are not schools, they cannot be accredited. However, both Time for Learning and Power Homeschool do offer online private school options if that's something you're interested in. Power Homeschool uses the same curriculum that is used by Acellus Academy, their accredited online school. You can get that program for as low as $79 a month with their Roger Billings Scholarship. I recently did a full review of Acellus Academy on my channel that you can check out if you want more information. Time for Learning is affiliated with Bright Spire Virtual School, an online private school for students in 6th through 12th grade that costs $3,990 a year. And if you're confused about the difference between an online homeschooling program and an online school, I have a video on my channel where I explain the difference, so be sure to check that out as well. Now let's talk about the courses Power Homeschool and Time for Learning have to offer. With Power Homeschool, their curriculum includes language arts, math, science, social studies, music, foreign language, and more. You can choose up to seven courses at a time. Time for Learning includes language arts, math, science, and social studies with their basic curriculum. If you want to add a foreign language, it's an additional $59.95 for six months unlimited access to their Rosetta Stone powered foreign language courses. For middle and high school, Time for Learning also has some additional elective courses in art, computer science, economics, and some others. Now let's talk about what the lesson format is like for each program. We'll start with Power Homeschool. When a student logs on to Power Homeschool, this is the main page they'll see. They can choose any course to get started. Let's try fifth grade science. The lessons will usually start with a video followed by some questions to check for understanding. Let's take a look now. That was pretty good. Whew. Man, it's hard to balance a ruler on your hand. But it's not hard to measure things using rulers. Rulers are a very, very important part of science. Lots of different scientific things are measured using rulers. Rulers are used to measure linear units. So this ruler has inches and it has centimeters. Now inches are part of customary units. Inches, feet, and yards. It takes 12 inches to create one foot and three feet to create one yard. Now, this is something that is common in the United States, but scientists all over the world use the metric system. It's a much easier unit because it's all based on 10. You know, in fifth grade, my math teacher's name was Miss Bird. She was this very tall, wonderful woman. And she would always surprise us if we did well on a test or something and do a cartwheel. That was one of the most memorable things about her. But the other memorable thing about her was she taught me this song. And I'm going to teach the song to you to help you remember the units of the metric system. <clears throat> you ready? I'm going to sing. Maybe I need a spoon, a fork. Here we go. 
It takes 10 millimeters to make one centimeter. It takes 10 centimeters to make one decimeter. It takes 10 decimeters to make one meter. It takes 10, my friend. It takes 10. Whew. I know I should stick to science, not to singing, but that was from fifth grade. And I remember that song all these years because it was just memorable to me and it made so much sense. So the smallest units are millimeters. They are the tiny little units that you see between the centimeters. And it takes 10, 10 millimeters to make one centimeter. If you think about the width of your pinky, that's about a centimeter and 10 millimeters would fit inside that, like the tip of a pencil. Then it takes 10 centimeters to make one decimeter. I like to do this sign because of the school that I went to. So 10 decimeters, a decimeter is about the distance between your pointer and your pinky. And then it takes about 10 decimeters, not about, it definitely takes 10 decimeters to make one meter. Now this keeps going, there are more units, but today we're gonna to just focus on these. We're going to do a little investigation with measurement. We're going to test which one of my four fingers is better at flicking this ball. So I'm gonna record this information in my science journal and we're gonna use measurement. I'm gonna record this using centimeters. Now the ball might not match exactly on one centimeter and if that's the case it's okay because I can use decimals and those decimals will represent the millimeters between the centimeters. Are you ready? All right let's go ahead and get started. All right I'm going to use my pointer finger first and we'll do three trials. I started here at zero and I'm going to measure from the front of the ball each time. This is 36 and 4 tenths centimeters. Wow, that went really far. I'm going to have to attach another ruler to it. If it goes past where your ruler is, you'll just need to add on to it. So this is 100 centimeters, my whole meter stick. So I'm just going to add starting at zero a little bit longer, how much farther it went. Exactly 105 centimeters. Wow, that was a strong one. Whoops, let's try that again. Oh, that didn't go very far. This is five and eight tenths. Now let's try my middle finger. Ninety-nine and three-tenths. One hundred seven and one-tenth. Fifty centimeters. Now it's time for the ring finger. Oh, that one felt weird. Eight centimeters. <laughs> this is definitely not my best ball flicking finger. Let's see, that's five and seven tenths. Oh, it feels weird. 41 and 2 tenths. That wasn't bad. Okay, time for the pinky. Thirty-five and three tenths. Forty-one and eight tenths. Last one. Oh, I'm getting better. Fifty-nine and one tenths. Well, I definitely think I will not be using my ring finger if I'm in a ball flicking contest anytime soon. But rulers are really actually very handy in scientific investigations. When you're measuring how far something goes, 
you can measure with force, energy, speed, but it's also something we can use with physical properties. Like a fork is a fork, right? Well, these forks are different lengths. So if I used my ruler, I would be able to tell the difference between them in their physical properties. So the plastic fork is 16 and 2 tenths, but the metal fork is 20 centimeters. So there is a difference between objects and matter and actions. There's so many uses for rulers. So why don't you find a ruler and see what you can measure today because it rules. Thanks for investigating with me today. So that's what a typical lesson for power homeschool is like. Now let's take a look at time for learning. As you can see, the student view is very different, but the lesson format is generally the same. Although there are some major differences between the two programs, which we'll get into in a little bit. For now, let's try a science lesson so we can compare it to power homeschool. Imagine you're in the kitchen baking a cake. You get all the ingredients out, mix them up, and pour the batter into a cake pan. 20 minutes later, the timer goes off, and you have yourself a warm, delicious cake. But did you know that baking a cake has a lot of science involved? During this lesson, you are going to learn all about the differences between physical and chemical changes and how these changes happen all the time in your daily life. Think about a popsicle melting on a hot summer day, getting a haircut, or accidentally dropping a glass and watching it shatter into pieces. These are physical changes. But when you're roasting a marshmallow over a fire, watching fireworks as they explode in the night sky, or noticing how bananas begin to rot when they aren't eaten quickly enough, those are chemical changes. But no matter what type of change it is, or whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas, one thing is certain, matter is never created or destroyed. Sometimes it just transforms. So get ready to learn about physical and chemical changes and all about things that matter. Hey kiddos, Miss Mercury here with my change-loving sidekick, Cyphus Pinkerton. Whoa, Cyphus, it's kind of warm in here. Aren't you a little worried about your snowball? Hmm, let's listen to a poem about some snow and maybe you'll see what I mean. Winter Writes My best friend moved down south. We said that we would write. I mailed her every week, but now we're in a fight. She says she's never gotten a letter or a note, that all I ever send her are empty envelopes. But since the day she moved, for this whole winter long, I've sent her 13 presents. I don't know what's gone wrong. The first time that she wrote me, she said she missed the snow. So once a week, I pack some into an envelope. It's lots of work to stuff it in. It gives me writer's cramp, but I'll make sure she gets this one by using twice the stamps. See what I mean, Cyphus? Well, we know the snow that was packed into the envelope and mailed to the friend down south didn't disappear. It just changed, right? Select the best answer to the following questions. Hit any text to hear it read. In the poem, Winter Writes, why were the friends in a fight? Yes, that is correct. Her friend was receiving empty letters, but they were originally sent with snow in them. What was actually happening to the letters and snow when they were being mailed? 
Great work! Get ready to learn all about physical and chemical changes. Now that we've seen what a typical lesson looks like for each program, let's look at some of the other similarities and differences between the two. We'll start by looking at the parent section. One thing you'll notice is that Time for Learning has a lot more customization offered than Power Homeschool. Let's start by looking at the parent section on Power Homeschool so you can see what I mean. To access the parent section of Power Homeschool, you actually need to download the Acellus app. When you sign in, this is what you'll see. You can add another student here or click here to manage your account. You can also click on your student below for more information. Choosing Manage Account brings you to this screen. Up top, you can add a student, request a transcript, or order ID cards. Down below is where you can make changes to the curriculum. Enable or disable social-emotional learning, add additional courses, or make changes to the courses you already have assigned. You can also change the weekly step goal here. This affects how many lessons your child is expected to complete per week in each subject. Back to student management. If you click on your student below, you'll see this screen. Here, you'll see the work they've completed so far for the day, their grades in each class, the syllabus for each of their courses, and their student hours. You can print any of these reports if you need to. There's also Live Monitor, which shows what they're working on in real time. If you click up here on Edit Student Account, you can change their name and login info. So that's what you can do as the parent on Power Homeschool. Now let's switch over to Time for Learning and see what that's like. Here is the main screen you'll see when you log on as the parent. Below, you'll see some information about your child's progress. If you click on Manage Students, you can add additional students here and change some of the information for your child. Most importantly, this is where you will come if you want to adjust the grade level for a particular subject. Just click on Update Courses, and you can change the grade level up or down, or remove a subject altogether. Down below, you can assign the Language Arts Extension and Time for Math Facts, which are available for extra practice at no additional charge. You can also view the scope and sequence for the courses your child is enrolled in, and add Time for Languages if you choose to. The most important tab to pay attention to here is the Lesson Planning and Reports. You can click on View Lesson Plans to see exactly what will be covered in each of the lessons, which can help you choose the grade level and which lessons to include. You can also access additional resources like reading lists, word lists, and supplies needed for the science courses. If you want to get really detailed, click here on Activity Planner. Here you can set things up either by how quickly you want your child to move through the curriculum, or by exactly which lessons you want your child to complete each day. So there's a lot of customization offered here that you won't find on Power Homeschool. If you choose Curriculum Calculator, just put in the start and end dates and how many days a week you want your child to work, and it will show you how many activities your child will need to complete for each subject to meet the goal. If you click on Detailed Plan, you can make more advanced selections. Put in your start and end dates and select which subjects to include. Click Choose My Material, and this is where you can remove anything that you don't want to include in your child's curriculum, such as units that include material your child already knows. You can also remove quizzes and tests if you wish, and set the redo score if you like. Once you've saved your plan, you can also go back in and set specific days of the week for lessons. You can also mark lessons complete here although Time for Learning will automatically keep track of this for you. The icon key here can help you understand what all of these symbols mean. You can also schedule breaks here if you need to. So you can see Time for Learning is a lot more involved as far as how you can set up your child's lesson plans and schedule. Whether that's a good or bad thing is up to you. Now let's compare the two programs from the student's perspective. We'll start with Power Homeschool. When your student signs in, this is what they'll see. So they can choose any class below to begin and go in any order they want. If they click on a lesson, over on the left here is the Resources tab. This is where they can see all the lessons for that course. They won't be able to skip ahead, but they can go back and view a lesson over if they need to. 
They can also view their weekly progress through the course. From the main screen, they can also view their progress for each course. They can see their attendance and grades, just like in the parent section. There's a calendar here, but I have to admit I am not sure how anyone adds anything to this. If there are any special lessons for a particular course, they will appear here. Science Fair is where they can go to enter the Asoa Science Fair. Science Live is a video series they can watch designed to inspire a love of science. Library has a selection of books and videos in various subjects. There's also a student blog here. Now let's switch over to Time for Learning. This is the main screen your child will see when they log on. They can choose any course here to get started. If you've set up a custom plan, they will click on My Plan to see what's scheduled for each week. They can change this to List View if they prefer. They can also change the view up here, although if you haven't assigned lessons for specific days of the week, nothing is going to show up. They can open any activity to start. Time for Learning doesn't force them to go in order the way Power Homeschool does, which can be a bit confusing just because they could end up going out of order. But once they do complete a lesson, it will show a check mark so they'll know it was completed. If we scroll down here, you can see there are some offline activities included in this program, which I think is nice. If they click up here on progress, it will take them to an area where they can view their attendance, in progress and completed assignments, and grading reports. Time for Fun is a little extra section with art and games that they can access once they've completed the set amount of lesson activity for that session. Okay, so now I'm pretty sure I've shown you everything you need to know about Time for Learning and Power Homeschool. So which should you choose for your child? It's a tough decision, but let me tell you what I think. And of course, this is really going to depend on your individual child, which is one of the things that makes homeschooling so great being able to choose a program or curriculum for your child based on their individual needs and learning style. So let me tell you what I think are the pros and cons of each program. We'll start with Time for Learning. One thing I like better on Time for Learning is the customization offered for parents. You can really set this up however you want for your child. So to me, this makes it more homeschool friendly. You may want to start your child halfway through third grade math because they already know the first half of the third grade curriculum. And you can do that on Power Homeschool. While you can assign different grade levels for each course, they'll have to start at the beginning and go through the entire course without being able to skip over anything. I also like the lesson format on Time for Learning. The lessons tend to be more interactive, asking questions along the way, rather than having students just sit through a whole video first and then answering questions at the end. And I like that they include offline activities, which I think is super important especially for things like handwriting practice and science. Some things I don't like so much about Time for Learning? Well, the customization is great, but some parents might find it a bit complicated. Also, the fact that students can skip around and not necessarily have to go in order on all of the lessons might not be great for a parent that's really looking for an open and go program. And the lessons can be a bit cartoonish and babyish, especially for the earlier grade levels. I've also heard parents and students say that they can be repetitive. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of Power Homeschool. Well, one thing I like about it is that your child isn't going to get out of doing the lessons. The videos even pause if you click away to something else on your computer. And forcing them to go in order means they aren't missing any important parts of the curriculum. I also like that the videos include real people, although you may find them a bit old-fashioned looking. I have no idea when they were filmed, but they look pretty old. I also like that it's simple to set up if that's what you're looking for. Not every parent has the time or interest in going through each course and setting it up to their exact specifications. And that makes Power Homeschool a good choice if you want your child to have some more independence in their learning, because there isn't much that you'll have to do other than checking on their progress. What I don't like about Power Homeschool? Well, I personally just prefer a program with more customization. Power Homeschool feels more like an online school, and that's probably because it's basically the exact same thing as a Celis Academy, except it's not considered a school, so you won't get a diploma and transcript from an accredited school. So for me personally, it's not homeschool friendly enough. In the past, they did have a tutor mode where parents could skip around and use only the lessons they needed, but they got rid of that and made a lot of parents upset. I also don't like how old-fashioned and kind of dry some of the lessons are. 
So which one would I choose for my child? Well, I personally think time for learning is the better choice, but that's only if your child is actually willing to do the program. For a lot of kids, the repetitiveness and somewhat babyish lessons might not work out. And if they hate doing it, they aren't really learning anything, are they? So it's really up to the child. And for a lot of kids, power homeschool might be a better fit because it feels a little more grown up. So my advice, choose the program that your child is more likely to enjoy. And if they don't end up liking it, you can always switch later on. Check out my full reviews of both programs, as well as many other online homeschooling programs you might not know about, such as study.com. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you so much for watching.